welcome back. There's our presenter in the background. Welcome back to uh, the second day of MMVC15. Uh, this is Nellie Deutsch, and I'm really, really pleased uh, to be able to introduce you to almost like a sister, I guess, uh, to a very close friend and colleague, Helena. And she is right here with that beautiful smile. And a little bit about Helena. I've never met Helena uh, face to face, well, only online. So uh, I think it's about time we met face to face. We probably will. I always say this very soon, as I'm sure we will. She's uh, from Poland and she's a senior lecturer. I think she still is at the University of Technology in the foreign language department. She has been teaching Polish as well as English. She started uh, using WizIQ in 2012. And she's very passionate about learning and sharing and making a difference in everyone's lives. And she does. You can see by her smile. Uh, not only face to face, but also online. She's very energetic, very caring, and very sensitive. So it gives me great pleasure to give you my dear friend, Helena. Hello, Helena. We don't see you. You seem to be in the dark. So I don't know whether your back is facing to us and you're going to reveal your lovely face by turning around or turning the lights on. Um, okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Thank you. So not, too, not too loud? Not too loud. It's absolutely okay. perfect. Okay, all right. If I want to turn on the lights, I have to take off my um, uh, settings. Just a second. Is it better? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Right. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello from my heart. Uh, as Nelly uh, told, I'm from Poland. I'm a senior lecturer, and uh, one year ago I retired, but I'm still teaching because teaching is my passion. And why I'm uh, presenting the topic, the future of education. The reason I'm doing it is because I really, really would like to find some answers. I have been asking around in all the media and at my university last year, I had the privilege to present here for Nelly's conference and I also talked about the online education. The future of education is a big, big topic. And telling the truth, I was searching for information very, very intensively. And uh, today, what I can uh, tell you, I was uh, also, by the way, um, sending around my texts. And I'm sorry, I'm a Polish native speaker. And first of all, Polish uh, language uh, uh, for foreigners teacher. But also, I, I teach English, conversational. English. So I'm not just a teacher, I'm a tutor, Before I, because I feel like a tutor. I am really passionate about education. And also, uh, I, I am from this background, that education has always been very important in my family and uh, around me. Education was like, like the basic of everything. Education is like breathing. It's like 
long time uh, learning. Uh, but nowadays, we are observing a revolution in education. Uh, we know that improving technology play a really important, distinctive role in, in evolution, in traditional foundation. And we are facing challenges. What's, what's very sure the only thing is extremely sure, there must be a change. And we are facing the change. In my presentation, I discuss some initial findings on the future of the 21st century. And uh, what I'm looking for is the best way to educate my my students. And uh, it is not about um, what I teach, but it is about how I teach them. So I have been trying very many methods. I have been learning and learning and learning and still learning. Uh, it is certain that uh, the future education will become more technologically driven and it will function in a new environment. But let's see what the others tell us about the education. I would I also wrote a text about my hopes for future education and I I published the text on um, a social media. But uh, I would like to start with uh, the quotation. Education is simply the soul of a society as it passes from one generation to another. This is very, very true. And also, I'm not a teacher, but, but I'm an awakener. It's just... Uh, by Robert Trust. Yes, I'm going to wake you up. <laughs> wake you up. There are so very many uh, information about education. My first slide is full of pictures. My husband hates it. He says, no pictures. You are too um, mature. Uh, but I love pictures. And why I put, uh -huh, I forgot to take the pointer. Okay, so why I put this picture here? Who could just tell me? Uh, uh, Rosemary, you can't see PPT? It's very upsetting. Okay, uh, this is my starting point. But in the picture, we can see just the baby, baby infant, sitting in front of the computer screen. I don't want to give any comment on that, because I'm going to ask you the questions. Would you like your grandchildren to... Uh, to be getting education just like that. Okay, and then there's a quotation from Malcolm. Education is our passport to the future. And it is. For tomorrow, to the people who prepare for it today. And we are the people. We do this. We are the teachers. We are the tutors, most of all, we are the learners. And the rest of those pictures are also computers, just the computers. What is real teaching? What is real training? What is real learning? What is the place of technology? and innovation. This is what 
drives us to new approaches, to education. What is learning and how is teaching connected to learning? Learning is teaching and teaching is learning. Learning by teaching, learning by doing, learning by searching, learning by communicating, learning by connecting. I can go and go like that. And uh, the basic question, what the future of education looks like. And pictures, look at those pictures. There's a big, there's a big discussion about the paper books and e-books. There's a big discussion about how our brain works. The truth of it is I got stuck with this neurology and the brain and the association with the brain and our teaching. All the time I'm asking the same question, the future of education, the technological revolution. Creativity. Creativity is so very important, as well as critical thinking. What we are going to do, uh, we are going to predict the skills that people would need in 20 years. There are millions of books, millions of texts uh, covering the topic. But it looks like digital literacy, creativity, problem solving, team working, and effective communication are essential. And uh, uh, by the way, I, I created uh, separate uh, PowerPoints covering all those uh, topics creativity, problem solving, team working, and of course, how to communicate effectively. Uh, but there are tons of resources. Now, again, the pictures. I love the pictures. The future next exit. Look at the guy, at the little boy. What is he? drawing on the blackboard. It is so, so cute. And uh, also the topic about uh, game-based learning. I would like your opinion on that. Uh, because there's a big, big movement uh, promoting game-based learning. I don't know uh, how many of you would be for it. I know that Nelly loves it. I'm not into it. I'm not a game person, but my students, uh, my, yeah, students of all ages, uh, they would tell me, yes, we can learn through games. And this is true for this very simple reason. They, the games are in English. So when I teach them English, they know different terminology, different um, uh, phrases, uh, just from the games. And more pictures with the kids using technology and the brain. What's going on in our brain right now? And look at the kid. He's sure. The future of education is technology. But now there are basic questions. Uh, education for whom? How many people participate in education. Um, I did my research and to my surprise it shows that uh, globally speaking uh, less, I mean there are not so many people 
interested in getting education as it was before. My basic question uh, was, what do you need education for? Edu education one thing, learning is another. This is true, but we are getting education through learning. That's what I think. And when I talk about educated people, I mean people who learned a lot, who know a lot, who can ask very many questions. Because asking the questions is what we should do. And learning is happening all the time. And uh, schooling, who wants to be schooled these days? We, to your surprise, very many students, because they don't know the other way. And they would tell me all the time, we need the real person. We need you. We need to see you. We need to to see your face, to have a real discussion. And uh, Polish students, mm, they don't like Polish schools. They, generally speaking, of course, generally speaking, all the time, generally speaking, they think that the, that the system is dead. Uh, but I can see that uh, you are coming with so many different topics. Homeschooling, of course, homeschooling. We also talked about it. And I was a very happy child because my grandmother uh, was my first teacher. So when I was five years old, I could speak five <laughs> languages just because of my grandmother. And I could speak French, I could be, speak German, I could speak Russian, I could speak English and Polish. And I didn't go to the first grade, I jumped to the second, then I didn't go to the third grade, I jumped to the fourth. Before I jumped, I had to pass a special exam. Vance is here and I'm so very happy because I love Vance's uh, job online and uh, I'm not reading my, my slides. I did this kind of presentation because I wanted you to go ahead and watch tutorials because this would be really, really the starting point for our discussion. Uh, what I did, and uh, thanks to Nelly and thanks to Nevis, I published the questionnaire uh, with some basic questions about education. And uh, believe it or not, I put the form, uh, I published that, the form, uh, in all kinds of uh, social media. And guess how many answers I received? 17. Uh, so I think this is just a joke. Maybe this is my fault. Or maybe people are not really interested in education. In my previous uh, PowerPoint presentation, I was analyzing differences between teacher, between tutor, between mentor. I was analyzing differences between learning, teaching, education. So this was in my uh, presentation uh, very many times. And uh, the topic classroom training versus online training is so obvious for all of us here 
in this uh, class. We know about advantages and disadvantages. We know a lot about it. But I'm still asking, I'm still asking what is better. Not what is better, what is going to be our future. That's what I'm asking. And uh, we have to remember, can you see the slides? Because I can't. Oh. Uh, and again, our children will create the future. We need to train people to have the creativity to reinterpret the world. I agree with that very much. And uh, I was reading different uh, um, uh, books and different uh, analysis and uh, I will have here uh, the... everything is obvious here because all of you know about those things. The presentation was made for the others uh, because not everybody knows. N our students need knowledge. Our students need creativity, need skills and leader, uh, leadership. What do we need? What do we, the teachers, the learners, need to know? We need to know that no one has a crystal ball to see the future. We need to think outside the box. And we do that. This is why we are here. We are here to discuss it. Looking for this crystal ball. Our possibilities are limited only by our creative thinking. Very many, very many teachers complain. I complain about the limits. I complain about difficulties. I complain about technology that the school uh, uh, schools uh, do not provide a special uh, education just a second just a second just a second I have to stop my video So I'm, uh, I'm I stopped the recording so we don't uh, get that. Okay, okay. we're sorry. back. It's okay. It was my sister. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, there is a link here. And I have mosquitoes and all kinds of bugs around me. So I'm sorry. Um, this is what uh, is uh, basic... Um, uh, this is what people think, that uh, what skills will the future demand. So you can see all the skills here. And if you can, click on this video. Because I couldn't put this uh, um, in our uh, with a queue. If, if it is possible for you to click it, would be perfect. If not, I have it prepared for you, just a second. And I'm going to... Mm -hmm, I'm going to give it to you on... Uh, all right. Oh. On the... I'm copying it right now for you. 
and I'm putting HTTP it colon in slash a slash www.economistinsights.com slash analysis slash driving skills agenda slash multimedia okay. HTTPS colon slash slash and this is slash a underscore watch. and that's VP 57 MK question mark list equals you you want KL 90 F care KG can you uh, if you can uh, click on this you will see let's just do it together maybe is it okay with you because this is from the economist let's just do it and go there and then discuss it I am doing this with you we need to scroll down to the video the skills agenda and try to watch it please Uh, uh, I'm back. I'm back here. Uh, if you copy the chat, you will be um, able to watch it. For me, it was uh, um, uh, important. Uh, this is why I told you to uh, try to watch it. If not, I'm going to use very basic videos that I put in here and uh, I think that Every everybody at the moment knows. is reforming public education. There are two reasons for it. The first of them is economic. People are trying to f work out how do we educate our children to take their place in the economies of the 21st century? How do we do that? Given that we can't anticipate what the economy will look like at the end of next week, as the recent turmoil is demonstrating. How do we do that? The second, though, is cultural. Every country on, the earth, on earth is trying to figure out how do we educate our children so they have a sense of cultural identity and so that we can pass on the cultural genes of our communities while being part of the process of globalization. How do we square that circle? The problem is they're trying to meet the future by doing what they did in the past. And on the way, they're alienating millions of kids who don't see any purpose in going to school. When we went to school, we were kept there with a story, which is if you worked hard and did well and got a college degree, you would have a job. Our kids don't believe that. And they're right not to, by the way. You're better having a degree than not, but it's not a guarantee anymore. And particularly not if the route to it marginalizes most of the things that you think are important about yourself. Some people say we have to raise standards as if this is a breakthrough. You know, like, really, yes, I, we should. Why would you lower them? You know, I mean, I, I haven't come across an argument that persuades me of lowering them. But raising them, of course we should raise them. The problem is that the current system of education was designed and conceived and structured for a different age. It was conceived in the intellectual culture of the Enlightenment and in the economic circumstances of the Industrial Revolution. Before the middle of the 19th century, there were no systems of public education. Not really. I mean, you could get educated in free at the point of delivery. That was a revolutionary idea. And many people objected to it. They said it's not possible for many street kids, working class children, to benefit from public education. They're incapable of learning to read and write, and why are we spending time on this? So there's also built into it a whole series of um, assumptions about social structure and capacity. It was driven by an economic imperative of the time, but running right through it um, was an intellectual model of the mind, which was essentially the Enlightenment view of intelligence, that real intelligence consists in the capacity for a certain type of deductive reasoning and a knowledge of the classics originally. 
what we come to think of as academic ability. And this is deep in the gene pool of public education, that there are really two types of people, academic and non-academic, smart people and non-smart people. And the consequence of that is that many brilliant people think they're not, because they've been judged against this particular view of the mind. So we have twin pillars, economic and intellectual. And my view is that this model has caused chaos in many people's lives. It's been great for some. There have been people who have benefited wonderfully from it. But most people have not. Instead, they suffer this. This is the modern epidemic, and it's as misplaced and it's as fictitious. This is the plague of ADHD. Now, this is a map of the instance of ADHD in America, or prescriptions for ADHD. Don't mistake me here. I don't mean to say there is no such thing as attention deficit disorder. I'm not qualified to say if there is such a thing. I know that a great majority of psychologists and and pediatricians think there is such a thing. But it's still a matter of of debate. What I do know for a fact is it's not an epidemic. These kids are being medicated as routinely as we had our tonsils taken out. And on the same whimsical basis and for the same reason, medical fashion. Our children are living in the most intensely stimulating period in the history of the earth. They're being besieged with information and calls for their attention from every platform, computers, from iPhones, from advertising holdings, from hundreds of television channels. And we're penalizing them now for getting distracted. From what? You know, boring stuff <laughs> at school for the most part. It seems to me it's not a coincidence totally that the instance of ADHD has risen in parallel with the growth of standardized testing. Now, these kids are being given Ritalin and Adderall and all manner of things, often quite dangerous drugs, to get them focused and calm them down. But according to this, attention deficit order increases as you travel east across the country. People start losing interest in Oklahoma. <laughs> They can hardly think straight in Arkansas. And by the time they get to Washington, they've lost it completely. And there are separate reasons for that, I believe. (laughs) It's a fictitious epidemic. If you think of it, the arts, and I don't say this exclusively the arts, I think it's also true of science and of maths, but let me, I say about the arts particularly because they are the victims of this mentality currently, particularly. The arts, especially address the idea of aesthetic experience. An aesthetic experience is one in which your senses are operating at their peak. When you're present in the current moment, when you're resonating with the excitement of this thing that you're experiencing, when you are fully alive. An anesthetic is when you shut your senses off and deaden yourself to what's happening. And a lot of these drugs are that. We're getting our children through education by anesthetizing them. And I think we should be doing the exact opposite. We shouldn't be putting them asleep. We should be waking them up to what they have inside of themselves. But the model we have is this. It's, I believe we have a system of education that is modeled on the interests of industrialism and in the image of it. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, schools are still pretty much organized on factory lines, so ringing bells, separate facilities, uh, specialized into set- I stopped the uh, video because I saw that uh, I'm, I was sure that many of you uh, knew this video. I, I used the video just to uh, remind you uh, about uh, his vision. And uh, in very many aspects, uh, Sir Robinson is right. Instead of waking the kids up, 
we are putting them to sleep. And uh, this is what worries me, because when I am getting students uh, as a private tutor, uh, the parents would contact me and they would say, oh, my kid is suffering from attention deficit disorder or dyslexia or something like that. And because I am a very experienced teacher, so after a after very short time, I know it's not the attention uh, uh, deficit disorder, it's just that the kid is very creative. The kid should be taught in different ways. So this is why I got interested in different skills and how to teach different different kids. I'm showing some graphics, some uh, uh, yeah, literature and citing it. Uh, and again, uh, it's this statement, just a second. I need some color. I'm looking for the yellow. Now I will have the yellow color. No, it's not yellow. Okay. Using the internet and connecting online made me feel like learning is no longer something kept for the young. And this is very important for me. Because at my age, I discovered that I do really uh, have the opportunity, possibility to learn. And this is why I, I really very strongly believe in lifelong learning. I have um, scooped my... I curate the topic on, on lifelong learning. And I, I learn. I teach and I learn. I learn from my students. I learn from my colleagues. I learn by doing. I learn by making mistakes. So this is what I call learning. Learning for me is a pleasure. This is true. And, uh, and yes, our learning brain is capable of learning and renewing. Because if we stop learning, our brain will slow down. And uh, I don't want it. Who is bored? Tausif. Are you bored? Okay, I'm happy. <laughs> and these are some things about lifelong learning. And uh, there are things that are important for me. I, uh, I am connected with very many educators. And uh, we have discussions. And... Um, I have heard from one of our dear presenters that he prefers uh, arguing than discussing. Uh, I prefer asking questions and having a nice discussion. And uh, to me it's essential. Some of my colleagues who are retired, they just don't feel like learning. And I feel very sorry for them. Uh, I'm from Poland, so we have a very deep tradition of being mothers, being wives, etc., etc. But I'm also a person. I have my needs. And I want to be able to improve myself. And this sentence, the learner as well as the teacher of the future is totally 
digitalize. Is it true? I take advantage of uh, new technologies, but I am for blended learning for flipped classroom. And look what I put in here. This is uh, from one of my sources. You will have the references at the end of the uh, presentation. And uh, I, I thought it is interesting. Uh, technology for flipped learning. And device agnostic learning. And uh, you can read it after the class, but and now, why is it so slow? My, my slides, come on, okay. So, now I'm going to go to my, my uh, important part of the presentation, but before I do that, I would like you to uh, recall Polish author, Polish writer, Polish science fiction writer. Uh, he's the author of The Megabit Bump. And I am very curious if anybody of you knows The Megabit Bump and the science fiction writer from Poland. Who is he? Okay, I'm gonna write it for you. This is, uh, he used to be very well known in, uh, in the world. His name is Stanisław Lem. All right, and now I'm going to use another dictionaries and libraries. Today, students can download an ebook in less than a minute. Search for anything in seconds and find any topic on Wikipedia instantly. Technology is opening up the world of education. But there's a problem. Today, in the U.S., a student drops out of high school every 26 seconds. 30% of students in the U.S. fail out of high school. And of U.S. college students, 46% will not graduate. Currently, education is a one-size-fits-all model. Visual learners, audio learners, and hands-on learners are required to learn in ways that don't always best fit their needs. We need a system that adapts to our students, not the other way around. Today, tied to a classroom, students are now able to learn anywhere. Whether that's at home, at the local coffee shop, halfway around the world, or anywhere that suits their needs. With the future of digital education, we can also expect more blended learning, with courses that incorporate online teaching into a classroom environment. There will be more textbooks available in digital formats. In fact, it's estimated that by 2016, 35% of textbooks will be bought in a digital format. And there will be more than million students every year. And 96% of those universities offer at least one online class. The future of digital education is now. And we've been doing it with more than 450 online classes. Right. Now, I would like to have some discussion. It was the... Can you hear me, by the way? Because I was playing with the audio and... All right, thank you. Thank you, Tassif. And um, so, from this very interesting video, we we learned how it goes in the states 
but it is not like that in Poland and in most of Europe. I think that, uh, for example, Brian would would yes me on that. Um, in Europe, uh, in Poland, uh, uh, people use Moodle, different kinds of Moodle, and at my university, of course, they use Moodle, but not very often, because, I don't know, uh, I used to be a model person, but uh, for some reason I gave up on that. Maybe I will be back with Nelly, uh, because I can't imagine my education without her. And uh, you can now see the, the slide uh, talking about using mobiles. And uh, when I started, um, when I started uh, my education about technology, um, we did not talk about uh, learning mobile learning. What we did talk about was if our students are allowed to use mobile phones during the class. And I was one of the group, from the group, um, that uh, said, okay, use mobiles, use iPads, use it because it makes our class better, faster, and more effective. Uh, Yes, I know about this, uh, Nelly, that it could cause uh, distractions because students uh, could use mobiles just uh, uh, to SMS each other. I'm sorry, the slide is so bad. Students are distracted by different things, but uh, our role a role is to make them focus on our tasks. So I would tell them, I need you to Google, and I would give the question. And there's no way. They have to work on the topic, because there is, I make it like a competition. And here we go, personalized blending learning. Technology isn't the driver. And there are different approaches to learning, such as project-based learning, um, make your education, game-based uh, game learning, and more. We continue to be explored as part of personalized, blended learning model. We need to change their mentality yeah but we we need to be their friends we need to be uh, extremely encouraging and then we need to motivate them to follow us i'm sorry about the writing here but to me it's against transactional bias transformational learning. And this is what is so extremely important for us to do, because we need to change our students from passive consumers to active learners. And uh, badges are also transactional, which is not good, I agree. I agree. So, in this transactional model, the student is a consumer and the teacher is a, the seller. I don't like it. I want students to be involved in the activities.
and this is what I think is the most important. Now I came to my transformative culture of learning. And uh, as you probably know, or maybe not, I'm very much into culture and cultural diversities. And I came to the point that I'm thinking about a learning culture. And uh, it's very important for me. And if we try to increase our students' knowledge about learning culture, uh, competence and performance, it will make a difference. This is what I think. Your learning culture, you already have one, right? And humans are wired to learn. As it says, learning is happening every day and learning is a bit like breathing. I have to speed up, I can see that. So, again, for human being, learning is a, as natural as breathing. And you know that. Now, I will go through some basic literature about the wired for learning, because we, the people, are wired for learning. You will see everything uh, uh, in my uh, references, and there are books that I was reading, preparing myself for today's meeting. The model, learn, remember, do, or, or, what do you think of this model? So, learning by doing, again, right? How do we remember things? Because when we do things, we remember them. This is what I think. And uh, the questions. How do we build trust with our students? And transformative learning and definitions and uh, I am very much for transformative learning because it develops at a individual thinking and I am for individual thinking. I used to, to tell my students whatever you say is true because this is your true. And they are, <laughs> they are uh, sometimes shocked. But now, when they know me, uh, they, they, they are just following. Transformative learning and dimensions. See, psychological change in understanding, in mentality. And convictional. Revision of belief system. You've got to revise yourself and change in action, behavioral things. And what is the purpose of our learning? I believe in opportunities to take risks and even falls. I learn through my mistakes. I know that. I make a lot of mistakes, but I learn. And I can't extend the session. Can I, Nelly? I don't know. By five minutes, maybe, I have to... Uh, I have to go. <laughs> I look at the habits, and I, I'm hoping that you will go through this presentation uh, later. I put the definition of learning because I thought it is important. It is important to know the differences because education, learning, teaching and studying 
Transformative Learning. This is the book that I um, suggest to read. And also Transformative Learning Culture. Look at the book, Exploring Learning, Teaching in Higher Education. I recommend it. So, again, the model, I love models, profits of transformative, continuing improvement, dynamic contribution, reliable motivation, active engagement, protection of top talents. We should do it. And add the, the resource area. Okay, I will do that. And a lot of things about mindset. Mindset. And I am now very interested in mindset. Mindset are, it sets are our beliefs. And this is basic. We should believe in ourselves. Because each person has a unique genetic mindset. And we need to take advantage of that. How to create the teaching culture? Again, the same suggestion. Be kind to yourself. This is true. And learning solutions. I, I, I uh, presented learning styles and learning solutions. Uh, don't forget, blended learning works with the brain's wiring. Yes. And I'm not going to talk about flipped classroom because everybody knows about it. Just the book that I suggest. And flip classroom and my thoughts about it and uh, my tips for the future education and the first tip is reading is a very good way of finding about the future and what should we do we should transform education let's just hope and this text is about my hopes and i will not read it of course this is for you after the presentation uh, in my tutorial thank you for your attention and fair thank you for your patience i am very passionate uh, teacher and i would like to uh, Thank you very much for your attention and everything. Nelly is now very nervous. I'm, I am done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. There's no, need, there's no need for me to be nervous, Helena, because there's no presenter after you. Ah, we, okay. we have a break. <laughs> All right, I didn't know that. I know, I, I don't want you to know that. I figured whatever you want to know, you can know. Anyways, we have a break, so Helena, I hope you'll join us. Uh, you've got your wonderful presentation behind you. It was indeed, uh, you've done an amazing job. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Really great. Thank you very much. Yeah. It was my pleasure, my very very big pleasure and I'm so very unhappy that you told Nelly is going to be last with a Q uh, uh, conference but I am hoping that you will not uh, give up on us and you will give us a chance to continue our education Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Helena. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You we'll see you later. Uh, there's the link to the next session. We're looking forward to seeing you. Please try during the next hour to um, get an account, you too, Helena, if you don't already have one, on MMVC15 Moodle. Please get an account there so that we can continue learning together even after the session is over, okay, on the Moodle. So it's Moodle Moot. 2015, you'll get the link. Thank you.
and copy the chat, Helena. You might want to copy the chat, yeah, uh, to get uh, information. Yes. And the link, if yes. you copy the chat, you'll also be able to get the link I, I to uh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. because I get tired of writing it. But if you want, I'll write it again. Yeah. It's noodle moot at integrating. Oh my gosh, integrating technology. I'm so proud of you, Helena. That was so good. Uh, is <laughs> integrating technology uh, dot org. Okay, so get your account there. You better call your sister. She's probably worried about you. <laughs> Thank you.